Hello my art loving friends. In today's video we will be opening and using my very last Palettful Packs box. It's the last one I'm ever going to receive, at least as far as I know. <laughs> Alright, let's open it up and see what we have to play with. In we go. Okay, I see linseed oil right away, so it's got to be oil paints. Yes, Daniel Smith Refined Linseed Oil. Blue little thingies this time. They're cute sticker. For some reason, I really like stickers. And a cheap, already kind of loose, <laughs> stretched 4x4 canvas. Doesn't look like there's going to be a way to tighten that, so... Hmm. Do you guys know how to tighten a little canvas like this without any stretch your things inside? Let me know. Ah, an Artist Loft Sorrento Round Oil Brush. Lots of sizing in that one. But that's a good size. I like that. Oh, and another good size. Lots of sizing, which is good because this one's protection came down and so there's so stiff that it didn't hurt the bristles at all. What is this one considered? An angle size 8. And ooh, you guys, these are Williamsburg's oil paints. I'm so excited because do you guys know who makes Williamsburg oil paints? It's Golden. <laughs> Same manufacturer of the Golden Heavy Body Acrylic and the Core Watercolors that are some of my favorites. They have these paints. And I've been dying to try them ever since I learned that Golden was Williamsburg. So now we have some. We can try them. This is very exciting. Severus Blue, Fanchon Red, and Permanent Yellow Light. And a three pack of De La Rowney Canvas Panels 5x7. Okay, I think I already know what I want to paint. So I've never used just linseed oil to clean brushes, so this will be interesting. I'm going to use my old containers that I used to keep water in. Probably don't need that much, but I don't know. All the literature says you can just use linseed oil. You don't need mineral spirits or anything like that. And it's also to thin the paint, so this should be interesting. I've always used paint thinner, odorless mineral spirits, something like that. And I am dying to see what these colors look like, so let's get them out here and take a look. Okay, that one didn't spew out, so that's good. This is a PY3, and I was trying to see how big the tubes are, but I don't see that. Okay, once you start squeezing, it wants to keep coming out, so that's good to know. It's a Series 3 paint, so that was the Permanent Yellow Light. This is the Fanchon Red. It's a PR112 Series 4 paint. You know what I just realized is we don't have a white or a black, which I don't use black all that much in oil painting actually, but I use a white all the time. Well, this will be interesting. I didn't even think about that at first, but could be interesting. All right, let's get this party started. So I start out by not using any linseed oil at all because I want to see how the paint is all on its own. And you can see it's not spreading on the canvas super easily, but it's not horrible. So I did barely, 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 and I mean barely, you guys, dip the tip of that brush into the linseed oil and you'll see me do it one more time and you can see on the palette there how much I'm putting on so hardly any and mixing a lot of the paint into it and it just spreads like a dream that is so nice however I realize here that I painted a part of the boat red that shouldn't have been red so I'm like well I guess we'll see if linseed oil will pull all of this paint back off of the canvas or if I'm just stuck with it. So I tried just wiping it with the paper towel. That didn't work. So I dipped the paper towel in the linseed oil and it just spreads it everywhere. That's one thing I noticed about using the linseed oil is it doesn't pull the paint off. It just kind of dilutes it, mixes it, spreads it around. So it's not something that I don't, I don't know. I'm a little confused how you use it to clean your brushes because so I'll talk more about that towards the end of the video or in the middle of the video. Actually, I, sh I show you a pretty good example, but for that, I'm like, well, I guess I partially toned my canvas. <laughs> oh boy. The one good thing about doing that though is that it left the slightest, tiniest bit of linseed oil on the canvas surface and all the rest of the paint just spread beautifully. However, the paint kind of spread beautifully everywhere, even when I hit the white parts of the canvas. So I'm thinking this is probably just really good paint. And I'll talk more about that again, like I told you already, but I have a feeling that this paint is just a bit softer makeup than some of the other paint I use. And a lot of my other paint is 
Windsor and Newton, and it's the regular Windsor and Newton professional line and the Winton version of Windsor and Newton, which I believe is more like the student line. Plus I have some other random paint varieties in my paint box, but I've always known that those were stiffer and I've done stuff to like use Liquin with them so that they'll be softer. And my favorite paints that I used to use were the Bob Rost Soft Formula. Those are so nice. However, at the time they're hard to find and quite expensive, so I don't have very many of them. You can see here I'm trying to make the light part of the boat without white and I'm getting kind of frustrated. I was kind of bound and determined to make it work though because I didn't want to add a white, darn it, and why didn't they include a white anyway? <laughs> I am trying so hard to make a variety of colors and lights and darks with just these three colors, and obviously the dark's really easy to get, but the light colors, not so much. And I guess if this were watercolor, you could just let the white of the paper slash canvas show through. This isn't watercolor, and I don't want the white of the canvas to show through. To me, on an oil painting, you leave the white of the canvas showing through in the middle of your painting, then you just didn't paint it and you did it wrong. <laughs> I know there are exceptions to what I just said, but in general, that's how I feel. The whole time I'm painting though, I am just in awe on how easy this paint is to use. I just am dying to try it on a bigger scale and more paintings and oh how I wish I had more colors. I don't think that Williamsburg were in any of the Happy Mail oil paints I received, but I am going to go take another look just to be safe, cover my bases, and maybe I'll get lucky and there'll be a Williamsburg white in there. <laughs> that would be awesome, but I'm pretty sure there's no Williamsburg paints in there. In fact, I'm just gonna go look right now. Okay, I looked. Lots of cool brands, no Williamsburg, as I thought. Okay, I've tried and I can't do it anymore. <laughs> I don't know how they expected us to paint without white. And this is a Da Vinci Titanium White oil color that I received in a previous art haul last year. I will link that for you in the corner in case you missed that. And I figured this would be a good time to try it out. And as usual, I've squeezed out way too much paint on this palette, but it's hard to judge how much you're gonna need. And if I'm going to be oil painting again soon, it will last, but I doubt I am going to be painting very soon with oils. We'll see. I have an acrylic project planned. So I don't know if you saw that in the time lapse, but cleaning with linseed oil, it just kind of spreads the paint around. So it's not cleaning it per se. Definitely thinning it and making it very weird, which is interesting. <laughs> There's a lot of interesting going on. But regardless, I have my white now and I feel like I could actually do a successful painting. So moving on. Oh, the freedom now that I have a white. I am a happy camper and it feels like a really nice white too. I'm going to have to use it a little bit more to tell for sure, but it did seem nearly as soft as the Williamsburg oil paint. So that was a bonus. And I have two huge jars of it and I do use a lot of white. So glad to have it. it seemed to mix in here really well. However, these paints are slick enough that the layering is tricky. You have to have a light touch. I mean, that's true with oil painting in general, but it seemed particularly the case with this. And now for the background, I am adding in a lot of linseed oil. Not a lot, actually. <laughs> you don't need hardly any linseed oil because it just grabs the paint and makes it spread really easily. So a tiny bit of linseed oil actually, but more than I was using in the boat part. And I decided to go ahead and stick something under this since I wanted to do the edges of it. And then I get some tape because it's like moving around and then I'm painting. You can see I was holding the edge with my finger, but now I'm gonna paint over that edge I was holding. So what do I do? I grab some tape, I double roll it up under the painting and then I stick it to that little wax piece of paper that I have and that solves all my problems. You can see me do that here in just a second. I just used some leftover tape I had on my desk from my watercolor project and now the painting stops moving. So that angle brush was really nice to get in along the edges and to cover big spaces. It would be fine even on a bigger painting. Just a minute ago there, a second ago, I was looking at my hands because they were covered in red paint and I don't know how or why and I was hoping it didn't get on the dress that I was wearing that day, <laughs> which is actually still today. Yeah, and I don't see any red on this dress, so hopefully when I go to work tonight, uh, <laughs> there won't be random red on the dress or maybe on my face. I should probably go check my face before I go to work, huh? 
Well, back to the painting, I'm just adding some ground because this boat kind of got washed up on shore, it looks like, and then some of the debris gets caught against the one side of it. And it was kind of fun to put that in. It just, this just layered so beautifully. It's so nice. And the brushes worked perfect, perfect for this size of painting. I wouldn't want to do really tiny details, although that round brush did have a nice fine point at the tip, so it wasn't a huge deal. I could probably get pretty fine lines, except the oil paint is thick enough. It's a little tricky without a longer point. So a rigor or something like that would be useful in the long run. So this combination of oil paint and linseed oil just made the painting experience, and I guess the brushes in a way, all three of them, made the painting experience really enjoyable. Like I wanted to grab another canvas and just keep painting because it was so fun. I wasn't fighting the thickness of the paint. I wasn't fighting it spreading across the canvas. It was layering when I wanted it to layer. You know, more brush selection of course would have been handy, but really I just needed that long thin rigor kind of brush. And I think the studio lights are blowing this out like the exposure and I've tried playing with it a little bit, but I do show you a shot of it at the end without the studio lights on. All right, I am done for now. Pretty well, actually this paint layers really well. I was going to say I'm pretty well at the layering max, but I actually think this could go more. I just am getting like little finicky details that I would be better off waiting until it was drier. Of course, now I'm sitting here seeing things that I want to add. <laughs> of course, little little rotty paint details. I think I'm gonna just let it be for now. I'm also out of time, which is sad, but that happens. <laughs> I do want to sign it real quick, and I usually sign on the right, and I think I will. Let me scooch that up just a bit, keep my hand out of it if I can. See if I can sign it with this fairly big brush, but it does get very thin. Okay, well I know I already told you during the voiceover, but wow, this paint was so enjoyable. If, if it is this paint and not just like the linseed oil making such a huge difference because I only use the linseed oil sometimes. So if that's the case, this will be my new favorite paint and I will need to use up all my old paint and buy Williamsburg. And to test this out, I'm going to paint a painting, but not anytime soon with using this Daniel Smith refined linseed oil just to see if that really, like if the tiny, tiny bit that I had in these brushes was actually the key or if it's the paint itself. It'll be a fun experiment to try and I, I'm not teaching an oil painting class until the fall, so it would take a special effort to paint again with these because I have so many other projects in the works for watercolors on my channel and we'll see. I'm dying to know, but yeah, this is definitely not cleaning the brush but I don't know, it's, it's an interesting goop. So what I'm going to do now is just take the brushes and get a tub of like, not soapy water, but like warm water and use my master's brush cleaner on the brushes. Well guys, if you were curious about Williamsburg oil paints, I hope that answers some of your questions. If you think of any more, leave them in the comment section below and I will see you guys in the next video. I think this was a great way to end a palette full packs. Bye for now. Hello. <clears throat> Didn't expect that. <laughs> that was a long rambling session. <laughs> Let's go. Where are you going, puppies? Duck, let's go. Good boy. I almost died.